All right, so after a marathon run driving back from Detroit, we got in uh, Sunday morning today, uh, about like 1.30 a.m. or so, and uh, we have a lot going on. So uh, right away, as soon as we pulled in, we we had uh, Mike and Chad from Oklahoma actually here waiting with a bunch of parts for me, and they were already crashed in the house. Um, Jason, that helped me, Jason L., he ended up crashing at the house too because we got so late. So I got a bunch of helpers that we can get this thing out of the trailer. The word has spread a little bit. I know our friend Pete is going to be showing up and who knows who else is showing up. Just from me being quiet and word of mouth, people are already going to be coming by today. So I'm going to get some of that free help, get the trailer unloaded, get the car in the shop. And as we always do, I need to mock this thing up. I got to do it. We leave for like... Um, the south in like five hours so we're gonna get this thing unloaded get it mocked up get all the stuff out of the trailer so that we can load the truck up and start heading south uh, for our next adventure so this is gonna be fun I cannot wait to see what this thing looks like with the grill the hood the fenders all that stuff bolted on it's gonna be so much fun take them out yeah I'm gonna put them over in the LaSalle corner <laughs> You want me to call Tom and see if he'll make you a sign for it? Go to the south corner. Go the south corner. It's like an assembly line. Yeah. It only took us a whole day to dig it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's the ones that's on the car. Yeah, now that up in the rafters. Yeah, I think it was up in the rafters. see all of the this is like a sixteenth of what we pulled out of the thing at the when we were there. Just stuff. There might be some treasure still hiding in here, which is cool. Yeah. Alright. We might need some help. Jeez. There should be some hardware right behind you. For the Yeah, the fender seems to be a little 
I have to take it back for a warranty. Jason knows this stuff was not stored very no. nicely. Because then we got to edit out all your swear words or whatever. Incriminating evidence. All right. I know, I know, I know. It's just a mock-up, man. We should have taken all the like thousands of heart pieces of hardware that were in the building. Match everything. This is my least favorite part of early Ford's. Reaching your hand up in the cross. Melt the freaking screw. Good for the breather. There's that, and then I luckily, just keep a handle. Luckily, also in the parts department, we have 32 foot rods. Recently in stock, from also from Michigan. Different Michigan, though. Different, Different part of Michigan, but also, I mean, we, that's how correct we get it, is it's from the right part, uh, of, the part of the country our vintage parts are from. I mean, we Say Justin, the rainy day has come. <laughs> yeah, this black 32 for open. Yeah, open. today is the rainy day. Uh, take this off. We got this at the Shrola Estate. It's even got the right shatine on it. and then <laughs> maybe fine tune it. It's a car. Yeah, man, it's a car. She looks good now. No, I got these at Carlisle. Oh, okay. I they were For a black 32 Roadster. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> much it. It's perfectly shitty, all of it. Need a headlight bar, and I'm like... Who's you, Jays? Alright. in it since the DeLorean. Possibly. 
then I'm gonna get a Coke habit after this. <laughs> you can't afford a Coke habit. I know, I got 32 Fords. Actually, this is like literally the perfect seating height. Hell yeah. I was gonna say that is a good job. Your head height in the car looks perfect. Yep, it's actually really comfortable. Perfect. Is that the upholster? Upholster that, uh. Yeah, I need you to. Go. I need it to be exactly right. the height of a 30, of a 40 Ford V860 wheel plus uh, half inch plywood <laughs> and a 2x4. You can see, I'll give it a test. Yeah, Well, that's it. That's it. That's that one. I think you definitely go a little bit more like this one. That's it. It's it's tight. Oh, it's the fabric. Mine goes further because there's no material. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And this will give us a little bit of the view. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Need to like pin that in somehow. Mm -hmm. Staple gun. Right on. I want to see the side profile of this stitch part here. You can actually see it really well. That's kind of wrapped around, but it's not. Oh, mine, you can actually see the side profile of the stitching. Oh, yeah, see, that side doesn't have this. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how to hold. Like I put something in here. I would yeah. just put a staple in it or something. Staple to the wood. It's good idea. I've got a little bit here. It's not too bad. It's got the little splits on the side, but it matches the car. Like yeah, perfect. Yeah, we're ready to go. <laughs> Somewhere I don't know. Tobacco. There it is. Yeah. What's left? Hmm. Stand back and see. That's good. so freaking killer. I know, right? It's like, oh, let's do something else. Oh, okay. All right, so we got the car all mocked up. I even did my little test sitting in the car with a, a fake seat, and it is just phenomenal. I am over the moon on this car. It is just so fantastic. It's just really crazy that I've basically been building this car in my head, and I didn't even know about this car for a, probably over a year now. I've been gathering parts uh, to build like a full fender, chopped, uh, early style, uh, 32 Roadster and it's just incredible that I found this car and of course that I had the hood that we found in Michigan and the grill that I got uh, from the Stroll Estate that was destined to be chromed on the Stroll 32. All that stuff is just looks right at home like it's been on this car forever so it worked out really really awesome. Now I've had a ton of questions from the first video that we didn't really address because we wanted to just kind of do the story of pulling the car out of how I got the car um, the car was obviously advertised. There was a lot of buzz about this car on the internet when it was first listed on Facebook. And I figured here during our outro, I'd kind of go over really quickly the cliff notes of how I got the car. So this car was listed on Facebook Mar Marketplace by the, uh, the owner's son, who you guys saw in the first video talking about the car. And he put it on Facebook Marketplace for a pretty affordable price. And I was probably one of the first handful of people that messaged him. And uh, as expected, he got bombarded with messages and uh, kind of just was overwhelmed and stopped responding to pretty much everybody. And then through a series of events, he, de he decided to uh, put it on eBay. Um, he actually at first was going to do an in-person auction at the garage in Detroit. And as expected, nobody really wanted to do that, like showing up with a bunch of cash and a bunch of people uh, just seemed not good and a lot of us were from far away even a handful of us were commenting on Facebook that were our Facebook friends and different stuff uh, how we wouldn't make that crazy drive with not knowing if we could buy the car so uh, that didn't work out obviously then a little bit of time passed and he ended up putting it on eBay sent a message to a bunch of people about the car saying 
like, hey, I put it on eBay, if you're interested, go and bid. Well, I was actually the first bidder on the car, and I put a, uh, I ran the car up to, uh, to $20,000, and then it was basically from there, the car had a, a handful of bids, and uh, it ended up going for, a, I think, a little under $25,000, and the um, gentleman that won the car, uh, I'm not sure what happened, but basically he, uh, he did not buy the car. I don't know if he ended up going there and looking at it and declined, or he just never uh, went and bought it. I'm not really sure what happened there. And then uh, from what I understand, there was, uh, he, the, the seller sent some second chance offers to other bidders on the car, and uh, those people ended up not taking that. And then eventually got to me, just stroke of luck, and I came in uh, from lunch one day, looked at the uh, at my laptop, and there was an, a second chance offer for my high bid. And I looked at it and was like, holy crap. And I was texting Mike and some of my friends like, oh my God, I, I, I can't believe this is real. Should I do it? And I just, you know, I couldn't get a hold of, uh, of the family to make sure that it was legit. I just did it because I was like, you know, I got to do this in case somebody he sent this offer to a few people. So hit buy it now. Did it, sent the deposit immediately. Uh, it was able to get on the phone right away with the family and just speak about the car, knew it was legit, and everything just happened really fast. It was like Wednesday at lunchtime. I felt, you know, I was able to, to secure the deal. Um, I had Thursday to basically get, go to the bank and get some money out and uh, kind of gather up some friends, and it was in a secretive manner, of course. And then Friday, we were on the road to do this, and we did a bit like a bomb run, and uh, it was really, really crazy. So um, we know that uh, through a little bit of the history, we've kind of learned that the, that um, DeLorean, uh, John or George may have owned this car, but we don't know for sure. We think the timeline's a little off from what um, maybe uh, the family remembers or was told, because the license plate on the car is 1954. Uh, they said that he got the car in 54, and to me it looks like the car was built, the little surround that was Frenched in looks like it was built for that plate. So it's hard to believe that he got the car in 54 and the plate was never changed. I'm wondering if the car, with the folklore is that the car was built in 54, and he may have gotten it a little after that. Uh, but we need to try and see if we could track down who built the car, um, if any, if, if either of the Dorian brothers did in fact own the car. Uh, we have understand understand that, uh, that George is, I think, still alive. He did an appearance at a museum in Michigan. Mike was kind of doing some research and found that out already. So we're going to try and get in touch with the museum, see if they have some contact info or can get us in touch with George to see if maybe he does remember owning this car and know some history. We also have the Down River uh, Modifiers Club plaque here that we found in front of the car. So we're going to try and find out some history on that. Uh, because they were one of the early clubs um, in, uh, in the area. There may be some information or people that remember it's still running around. So we're just going to try and find the history on the car, but it's cool to get it mocked up and to see what it looks like. And I'm going to keep digging into the car and kind of just figuring out what's going on with it. I know I have a thousand freaking projects. Everybody's gonna, been giving me crap and is giving me crap, but uh, like a lot of much wiser, older collectors that I've learned from, the time to buy a 32 Ford is when you get the chance to buy it, especially a Roadster, it's an old hot rod. It's like, you know, bucket list car. So I made it happen and uh, I'm just gonna kind of put it to the side, make sure I figure, try to find out what the history of this car is before we start digging into it. But it's going to stay like this basically. Um, I'm going to probably get a convertible top made for it when the time comes to replicate what's there. But I'm going to try and save the old shitty paint and make the thing perfectly shitty and have this cool age to it. I think some of the paint will polish up. I may have to get the passenger door um, painted and try and get that blended to match because all the paint kind of fell off of that. But we're going to embrace the shittiness and try and just get this car put back together and uh, we'll kind of figure out its history as we go as best we can. But just super exciting. I definitely want to thank everybody that helped me get this, uh, especially Jason and Jason that, that did the drive out there with me. Uh, it, it was just really fun and they were so helpful and I wouldn't be able to do the trip without them. And, uh, and everybody else that kind of kept the car secret during all this time when I was uh, stashing it away. Uh, but really, really fun. So we'll definitely do some updates as we go, but um, that's, that's basically it. This is the, uh, this is my 32 Roadster. I'm so happy. Thanks guys. Catch you later.